the black chair right there. No, that one right there. And I'll make sure they come in and talk to you. Okay. Currently at three three nine zero Oasis in Havasu, correct? That's right. Do you live alone or who do you live with? I oh, know I'm by myself. You married, single, divorced, widow? <clears throat> I'm divorced. And uh, I've been living in Oregon for the last forty three years. And my mother and uh, her husband are in their upper 80s, and their health is kind of failing, so I decided to get a little closer. Where did they live? They live in Riverside, California. Okay. So if they live in Riverside, why Lake Havasu? Well, it was as close as I could get without going to California. I didn't want to try to buy into California. Mm, okay, so you're on your home in uh, uh, yes. Lake Havasu? Okay. You came down on your own, correct, Michael? You came, I'm sorry? You came down here on your own? Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, and you know why you're here today? What uh, we're here to yeah. discuss? Okay. Um, the reason why you're here is because there are two sides to every story. Okay. And. Uh, just so I'm clear, why why are we here talking? <clears throat> so I know that you know what we're talking about. Oh, because the uh, the incident there at uh, I believe Walmart. Okay, can you explain a little further what incident? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I was just uh, you know I came in shopping around for uh, you know some bargains on clothing more than anything. And uh, you know, uh, things just get a little out of hand in there for you in Walmart. How's that? Well, see, so you came to Walmart to buy some clothes. They don't sell clothes down at the Walmart in Havasu. Oh well, yeah, they do. But uh, you know, uh, I go straight to the uh, discount. Aisles and, and see what they've got to offer there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so what happened at Walmart? Well, I was shopping around and uh, couldn't find anything in the clothing. And, uh, couldn't find anything else that I was interested in. And I left. Okay. Okay. Well, before we go any further into into this line of questioning, and because you can't get out without having a special key card that they assigned to us, I'm going to read you your Miranda rights, okay? Um, doesn't necessarily mean that you're under arrest, okay? Just that you're not free to leave without us being able to let you go. And because you're being here and held and asked questions, I'm just going to read you your Miranda, okay? Uh, so you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to any questioning and to be with you during any questioning if you so desire. If you can't afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed to you prior to any questioning. You understand those rights so far? Okay. And are you willing to answer my questions here today? Yes. Okay. Okay, so is that pretty much 
the meat and potatoes of, of what we're talking about is you went in to go shopping and you didn't find any good deals and then you left and that was it? Basically, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I think you and I both know that there's a, it's a little bit more than that. Is that your picture, Michael? Yes. And that's the same picture on your driver's license, that's correct? It. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Bailey, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna give you some really good advice right now. I've been here at Bullhead PD for 20 years, and I've been a detective for the last six years. And uh, it's in your best interest to tell the truth, uh, to take responsibility for your actions, and uh, don't sit here and act like you don't know what's okay. going on. No. You know, because we really don't invite people into Bullhead PD that come to our Walmart and leave without buying anything. We don't have those restrictions that if you come to one of our stores that you have to make a purchase. So I know that, that uh, that's bullshit. Okay, so if you want to help yourself, you can be honest with Detective English here. Okay. You know, if you want to dummy up, then no, I don't want to dummy up. Okay, I want to, I want to get this thing uh, straightened out. Okay, as best as possible here. What kind of what kind of vehicle do you drive? Well, I've got uh, uh, Saturn. Okay. Station wagon, and I've got a Chevy Colorado pickup. Okay, and what color is that? And that's a silver gray. Okay. I don't know how good your eyes are. Does that look like your vehicle? Do you have a uh, utility box in the back of your yeah. truck? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Who's that? That's me. That's you. Do you, you want to start over? You want to start over and <clears throat> Tell Detective English why you're here, or, or do you want to continue going this no, I'm just, stupid uh, route? No, I don't want to be on a stupid route. Okay. So why don't you start over and tell Detective English uh, why you know you're here today? Okay, well, uh, he explained to me yesterday that, uh, that uh, they said that I was uh, following people around and uh, and he said he, that I was exposing myself well I've never in my life exposed myself I mean really maybe revealed the clothing I had on was revealing but as far as bare skin okay I could see that Michael listen these discs right here are you um, exposing yourself and fondling yourself in the Walmart clothing section while you file, followed a young girl around in that section. Okay? Is that an accurate statement? Uh, yes, it would be. Okay. Um, there was a lady who caught you, who saw you with your genitals exposed, following no, her no. granddaughter. No, I'm no, telling I've you. I've never had my genitals exposed. Okay, all right. Uh, that's a fact. I, I would never do that. Okay. But you were touching yourself. Well, that's true. And, uh, you know, the clothing I had on might have been a little revealing, but there was no exposing my okay. genitals. Well, this isn't the only person. On the same day, this is... Uh, I don't know if that's the narrative. April 20th, or 21st, is the date of the pictures that I showed you. Okay. I contacted... I have two witnesses that say that they've seen your genitals hanging out of your shorts, those blue shorts that you were wearing, that you pulled them up so high that your testicles were hanging out. Mm -hmm. One of them, who had a little three-year-old girl with her, while you passed her, passed them both through the dairy section. Okay? Then there's video and witness accounts of you following this young girl through the clothing section on that same day 
and exposing yourself on the other side of the clothing rack, fumbling yourself, the old lady in the wheelchair saw you. She saw your genitalia in your hand, and you weren't there shopping. Okay, so let's throw that theory out, because you were there for a total of about 15 to 17 minutes. So you weren't there shopping, okay? You went there with one thing in mind. And maybe you didn't have it in mind, I don't know. Maybe it's just something that happened and you responded on it. But that's why you're here, you're here to explain that. So well, please I had tell money, me the truth. I had money with me and if I had seen something that I would have put. You know what, more, I call bullshit. I call bullshit, you came to our Walmart in our city to do one thing and one thing only to get your rocks off by looking at little girls. You walk down the dairy aisle, and if we need to show that DVD to you, we will. With your shorts pulled up so far, your junk's hanging out. You offended a mother and her three-year-old child. Should a three-year-old child have to look no. at your old penis and testicles? No. I don't think so. No. But you chose to do that. You obviously enjoy that. And then if that wasn't good enough for you, you went over to the little girl's clothing aisle. Now, how many bargains do they have for 65-year-old men in the children's clothing aisle? Zero. None. I went and looked just to make sure that they didn't have a random men's clothing in, in the children's aisle. And while you were there, you had your hand in your pants masturbating. And then your testicles and penis, again, were hanging out from the bottom of your shorts. Can you explain that? And you want to tell me that you came up here to look for bargains? No, you didn't. You came up here to look for little girls. And you know what? I am offended by that. Michael. And don't and say that this is the first time that anything has happened. It, and it's not, because you went back and you did it again. I don't know where the narrative is at, but uh, you went back and you did it again. Um, and I have a whole other list of witnesses that saw that. In fact, that's how we found out who you were after that point. Because there was a, uh, an employee who watched you and followed you throughout the store and watched you and got in, after you left and got into your truck. We got your plate. We ran your picture by everybody in these two incidences so far. And everybody, without hesitation, picked you out in this photo lineup as a man who did these things. So it's not the only time you've done it. Not only that, I've ran a criminal history on you. You've been arrested for it before, correct? Well, yeah. Okay, so okay. it's not the only time you did it. Yeah, back in 1971, you were arrested. And, and Up in Oregon. Up in Oregon. Up in Eugene, in, right? In, in, in the Eugene area, mm -hmm. and it wasn't for, there was, it was a, a, a streaking. Back in the days when, when that was kind of a popular thing to do, and that's... And so I, that makes it okay. No, it, that makes it okay no, now that you're walking around Walmart with your shorts pulled up to your fucking neck so your junk can hang out. No, that's yeah. not right. And yeah. then there was another occasion, right? In, uh, what was that other place in Oregon where you had another um, incident with some uh, indecency? Do you Baker. recall that? Baker. In Baker? You know what, Michael? We got all day long. All day long to sit here to, for you to jog your memory. So, I got coffee. I'll bring my lunch in if I need to. So tell us what's going on. You went into the store on April 21st. This is the day of the pictures that I showed you. Let's start from when you showed up. You get out and you go into the store. So tell me what happens. Tell me about your day or that, that moment in the uh, store. I was just uh, wandering around. You know, I wasn't, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I wasn't, uh, So are you denying that you did any of this no, stuff? No, no, I, I, I uh, <clears throat> I'm denying that uh, 
I, I didn't realize that uh, I had exposure. Okay. Really? Um, when your blue shorts were pulled up to here? shorts were pulled up, but uh, I thought there was enough cover. Do you wear underwear or do you go commando? Uh, I wear underwear. You didn't wear them that, that day, though, did no. you? Okay. Okay. So why didn't you, why when you left your home that day, you didn't put underwear on? Because you knew what you intended to do. Am I right? Michael, Michael all day long, this is all I do, is deal with people that commit sex crimes. And you know what? You can make this either easy on yourself or you can have me on your ass. No. And I'm going to tell you what, you don't want that. No. So get your mind right here and start, start talking the truth. <clears throat> You left your home that morning, you put on those blue gym shorts, and you didn't wear underwear. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, uh, for the last 10 years, my blood pressure's just been spiked like crazy. And so I've had almost no sexual desire over this last 10 years. And every once in a while, I guess get a little tingle of a feeling. Mm -hmm sexually and uh, even though it's like uh, those two incidences were the only two times I came down here since I've been here. I've okay. been here over a year. So what kind of situation gets that tingle going? Because <clears throat> the pattern that I'm seeing here is younger girls. Well, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm in the market. I'm looking for a, for a woman my own age. Okay, but well you weren't looking for a woman your own age that day. Well, if you know, I'm... <clears throat> How old are you? 66. 66. I'm 54, so we're pretty close to the same age. You know what? Would not turn me on to see you walking down the dairy aisle no, with your no, junk no. hanging out. So that's not how you get a woman. No, it's not. You might want to check Match.com because I don't think that's one no. of their uh, dating... Uh, uh, ideas. No. Do you have a home computer? I, I've got one, but I don't have an internet. When was the last time you had internet access? Never have. You've never had it? Then what's the purpose of having a computer? Well, I keep threatening to get a... What's the purpose of having a computer if you don't have internet access? I just, uh, I had a computer in Oregon. I uh, had it for about 10 years and it's been kind of down for the last couple I never did get it on. How much child pornography do you have in your not home in Lake Havasu? That, that's something I'm not into. Okay, really? well, let's, let's, let's do this then, Michael. If, if uh, we got a hold of the detectives and just to throw, just to throw that all out to prove that you're, you don't have that stuff on your computer, would you be willing, if I called Detective Slack down in Havasu, the detective that went out and talked to you, would you be willing to forfeit your computer so that she can forensically search that computer? Absolutely. To make sure that you have nothing in there? Absolutely. So you have Honestly. no child pornography in your home? I do not, and I'm not into that. But you're into coming into Bullhead City, going to the Walmart, going to the little girl section. You didn't even go so far as to go into the, to the teen section or the junior section or the women's section. You went straight over to where the little girl size one to size 6X. Michael, that's where you went. The, the, the point is, is that the Walmart in Havasu, the Walmart in Kingman, the Walmart in Timbuktu, the Walmart the here are all the same. So there really was no reason for you to have to come all the way up to Bullhead to shop for some kind of deals, okay? And it's not like you were out there shopping and then all of a sudden, because you haven't had any sexual desire and you felt it come and you, you felt the sexual desire come up and you had to react on that, that isn't the case. You came specifically to the Walmart in Bullhead City for a reason. Because you could have done all that stuff in Havasu. And you could have had all that stuff happen to you and all those feelings happen to you in Havasu, but you didn't go there. That shows me intention. You came here for a reason. Am, am I pretty close? <clears throat> oh, let me have that pencil out of your pocket, please. Do you have any other sharp objects or oh, anything? I don't know. Got a knife or anything? No. Okay. What we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to let you sit here and 
think about it because I want to come back in and have you start telling the truth rather than sitting here and bullshitting us. All right? I'm going to call a spade a spade. You're lying to us. Don't appreciate it. So you take a moment. I'm, you try, take a, I'm trying to be truthful. You yeah, you're I'm trying sorry. to be truthful. There's a difference between trying to be truthful and being truthful. I'm going to give you five minutes. When we come back, be truthful. Don't try. Be.
retired, you know, Michael. What, what did you do for work when you were working? I worked in construction. In the union or anything like that? So it's like heavy equipment or, okay. When did you retire? <clears throat> Six years ago. Okay. And were you still living in Oregon around that time? Yes. Okay. So you've been down here since you retired, pretty much? Uh, no, I just moved here uh, a year ago, February. Okay. And you've lived in that address on Oasis ever since then? Mm -hmm. I moved in a year, May 1st, a year from last May. So you had some time to think about things. You've never done anything like this before. But of course you have. Uh, you know, for the last 10 years, I've, uh, you know, with this high blood pressure and uh, you know, I've been impudent now, my wife left me 10 years ago when I was married to her 20 years. What's her name? Judy. Judy Bailey? I haven't seen her in 10 years, but I would uh, think so. Where's Haynes, Oregon? Because you lived there for a while, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I lived there for 28 years. Mm -hmm. What'd you do in Haynes? <clears throat> I had 15 acres up on Rock Creek. It's like, uh, well, I had a little equestrian ranch up there. What'd you do to get in trouble up in Haines when you got arrested? In Haines? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. <clears throat> Baker City is just 10 miles away. Mm -hmm. That's all in, is that in Union County, Baker City? No, that's Baker That's County. in Baker County. Okay, well, what did you do in Union County? In, oh, in Union County, mm -hmm. that was La Grand. But you were living in Haines, right? When you got in trouble in Union County. Right. What, what'd you do then? <clears throat> Let's see, I was uh, walking through a clothing store and The lady was passing me, I, I touched her on the backside. Mm. And that, I'll tell you, I don't touch people, but uh, that time I touched her on the backside and I didn't think I offended her, but I did. See, Michael, we don't bring people in here and talk to them unless we've done our homework. So we know about that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We know about your indecent exposure. We, we know all of this stuff, Michael, so you can't come in and bullshit us. Oh, yeah. Your domestic S assault, kidnapping charge that you got, that was... <clears throat> when you wouldn't let your wife call the police? Remember that one? Yeah, I remember that one. And, you know, talk on it. There's another uh, situation that uh, it got kind of turned around. I mean, they called it kidnapping. My wife uh, said that she was going to take off and uh, she was going to go down to a, and spend the night at an uh, abused woman. At a shelter? S shelter. Mm -hmm. And I never laid a hand on that woman and I, you know, I mean, we were getting along real well, but uh, that was her way of dealing with it. and. Uh, when she started to leave, I jumped into the driveway and, she, and, uh, and I really don't know why I did that, uh, because I, wa what I'm I hearing, really wanted her to leave. Uh, just, just, what I'm hearing, Michael, is everything, everything has really been turned around and it's really not your fault and 
Remember the advice I gave you when you first came in here is to take responsibility for your actions and things will go a lot easier because the more we do this little dance, the more pissed off I'm getting. And I'm not going to be a very good dance partner for you very much longer. All right? You told us that you're looking for a woman your own age, yet you're in the little girl's section. You're walking through Walmart. Well, well, you leave home that morning. You put your blue gym shorts on, and you don't wear any underwear. And you did that for a reason, because I'd venture to say you have underwear on right now. Am I correct? Well, I always got a real good. Until you decide that you want to come and expose your genitals, that's when you don't wear underwear. Am I correct? Is uh, that a fair statement or not? Like I say, I, I haven't had any of those kind of desires at all. I've been uh, up until you decide to come to the Bullhead City Walmart. Then you have those desires. Then you don't wear your underwear. Then you expose your genitalia. Michael, paint a picture like it's something that happens to you on the at the spur of the moment and your actions on that day are completely contrary to to exactly that you know you were not just shopping and you didn't feel a little tingle in your genitals and you didn't feel like you had to rub on them or anything because of that you came all the way to this Walmart for a reason okay because you could have done all that stuff at the you could have been shopping over at the Walmart in Havasu. Mm. So let's just cut the bullshit. You know what I mean? And and I, the point I'm getting to is this kind of stuff, it doesn't just happen. You gotta work your way up to something like this. You know what I mean? Like it starts somewhere and it starts small. I know it. Okay? And then it gets bigger. You get bolder. You didn't just start touching yourself on that day in front of people. You worked your way up to it. And I'll venture to say that you've probably been doing it for a while, and you only got caught this time. So let's back up. Because we want to understand. I want to understand. The courts are going to want to understand what drives a person to do something like that. And if maybe they have a little insight on what's going on in your head, it may help them when they make their decisions. It may help you. I don't know. So let's back up. Where does this start? How long has this been going on? I guess quite a while. I mean, it, it, it does. You know, it, it's like I was married for twenty years, and you know, uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out. Uh, What's your sexual preference, Michael? Well, what do you prefer sexually? I, I prefer uh, females my own age. Not. Older, not younger, my age. Okay. So then why why the clothing section for the little girls? Well, I'm not really sure about that. That, that. that kind of thing doesn't do anything for me. Like I said, come on. You think telling me that and then what I've seen in these videos that that even makes sense? Do you think I'm really blowing smoke up your ass that I'm telling you what I've seen in these videos, and that's not the only video. I got more, okay, from the other times that you've gone in and done this, okay. So that that doesn't that doesn't even make sense. It starts somewhere. There's a fascination, okay. Am I wrong? Somewhere there's a fascination. It starts with the fascination, correct? So let's be honest. Tell me about that. Help me understand. You know, 
know, for for the most part, I feel like I'm a normal human being. You know, I, I mean, it, I, I do have a fascination. Uh, uh, uh. Give me a little insight on that. What do you mean? Fascination? Tell me about the fascination. Well, I fantasize uh, different things, and uh, you know, it's not necessarily uh, younger women, it's you know. You know, I can see the way girls look these days, you can't tell anymore how old they are. Yeah. But I completely understand that the physiological attraction to something that's good looking. You know? So I'm not looking at you like you're a monster. I'm trying to understand what's going on. But in order for me to do that, you have to paint a picture for me. Now, I think we're getting close to the truth. I think there may be something going on with the younger girls. So let's just be honest with that. We're here now. We're here now, let's deal with this. It's not going away until we deal with it. So. Well, this is true. I do have a fascination with, uh, with younger girls, but uh, that's as far as it goes. Okay. You know, I, I would never uh, rape a, 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 a anybody. And you know what? Let me just be. Specific. Let me just explain something. We're not talking about rape. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a little uh, indecent exposure right. claim. Okay, it's not the crime of the century. Okay, but we got to get to the root of of the situation so that we can figure this out. So. Tell me about this fascination. I mean, how old are we talking? What's the youngest? <clears throat> what do you mean? What's the youngest you've ever fascinated about? What's the youngest age of a girl oh, that you've ever fascinated about? I don't know, six, seven. Okay. But I, I you know, I mean, over the last years, I, I, I've, uh, you know, I'm getting away from all that. And, and how and, many years are we talking? How long have you had? How long can you think back that you've had these kind of feelings? Or well, I guess we're well, back thirty years. Okay. And uh, would I would I have uh, been pretty close by saying that it starts out small and it builds up to something like this? It's not like all of a sudden you went out and you started doing this kind of stuff. Where does it start? It starts from the fascination. We discussed that. Right. And then where does it go from there? Pictures? No. No. Never never have gotten into any kind of child porn or any of those kind of things. And that's the God's truth. It's just So if I went and searched your house, I wouldn't find any uh, child pornography or erotica or anything, pictures of little girls in underwear from the J.C. Penney catalog or anything like that? Okay. Right. No. So this is a fascination years that you've had for about 30 years. Well, yeah, well, that'd be fair enough. Okay. When you went into Walmart, Let me just start off. When you went when you went to Walmart on the on the twentieth, okay, when you were in the blue shorts, um, and those pictures that I showed you, and your truck was in the parking lot. Was that in your was that your intention for coming to this Walmart here to act on those fantasies? Uh, well, I was coming up to this area to go over to Izod's. That is was my plan, and buy some slacks, okay. in which I did. 
and the last time I was here, I also went up there trying to buy the same kind of slacks, the, the Izod golfing slacks, and uh, they didn't have my size. But the first time I went in there, I bought two pair. How many times have you exposed yourself or masturbated while watching a young female child in the last 30 years? More than five? More than 10? Too many to count? Oh, no. Because you've never been caught, have you? This is the first time you've been caught, am I correct? Or have you been caught before? No. Okay, so this is your first time. Basically, yeah. And so how many times would you say that you have fondled yourself or masturbated or exposed yourself in the last 30 years while you're fantasizing about girls from six years old on up? Well, it's been a few times, but those feelings have been going away. Okay, well, I'm glad that those feelings have been going away, but what's a few times? Well, it sounds to me like if, if you're having to think that hard about it, it's, it's too many times. Too many times, Michael? That's just in the last 10 years, it's been very, okay. very Okay, too few. many times, or how many times in the last 30 years that you have fantasized about little girls from the ages of six years old on up, how many times? Well, 30, 40 times. Okay. And did you do that in Oregon? I mean, because that's where you lived. How many times have you been to the Bullhead City Walmart and done this and not got caught until this time? Twice. Twice. Twice before you got caught? No. So this was the first time? No, this is the first two times I've been there. Okay. What about the Walmart or any other clothing store in Lake Havasu City? No. And the reason for that is you thought that you could come up here and not get caught because you drive a vehicle that doesn't have Arizona license plates on it. Not necessarily. I normally drive my Saturn. My Saturn. Well, two times up here, though, you drove your pickup truck, right? Right. Because and that pickup set. truck does not have Arizona license no. plates on it, does it? No. I, so you, I think, I think a reasonable person would say is that you thought you would never get caught because you're driving a vehicle that doesn't have Arizona license never plates on it. Never crossed my mind. I, I, really? I, I always drive my Saturn. No, you don't always drive your Saturn because on, at least on two occasions you drove mm. your truck. I know, because my Saturn... First, the first time it was down with, with plugged injectors, and then the second time I thought I had plugged injectors again because it behaved exactly the same way, and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do about it, so I parked it for two months. So you drove your truck up here that has the Oregon plates on? I had. I drove my truck. Right. It's the only vehicle that was running at the okay. time. And I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to sit here and diagnose you. And you know what? I don't care about your childhood. I don't care about any of that. I want to know why you did what you did. And you know what? You're not manning up to it. You're saying you're blaming it on blood pressure and this and that, and your wife left you and blah, blah, blah. And so you know what? While you're talking here, all I'm hearing is blah, blah, blah. Because I've got a three-year-old girl that I just interviewed that said that she never wants to see the bad man again. A three-year-old girl that doesn't want to see the bad man. And you know what she said? She said, I hope the bad man goes to the hooskow. You have changed that child's life. So, you've changed that child's life. Three years old, three years old, and she doesn't want to see the bad man again. She doesn't want to go to Walmart with her mom anymore for fear that bad man is going to be in there. The bad man that had his gym shorts on with his uh, cock and balls hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what, I, I, I'm at a point now where I'm not going to use nice terms or anything because you didn't care what a three-year-old child saw and her mother who saw it. And then after that, you go over into the girls' section. 
you've got a problem. You've got a problem and those feelings aren't going away because a month ago you came and did the same thing that you've done 30 or 40 times previous to this. So, I'm... I'm discouraged that you won't take responsibility for your actions. Detective, I don't want to talk to him anymore. Okay. Anything else you want to say about this? <clears throat> no. Or say for yourself? I'm just not, not sure what to say. I mean, I... See, my concern is, is that even with us sitting here, and even with this going on today, that later on when you're out there, because remember I spoke about a, a progression. You started out fantasizing. You don't want to talk about the in-between. You say that there's no pictures. No. You say that you've never fantasized. I, I, I can't say that I believe you, okay? But you've definitely progressed. And you're skipping that point. Well, that's something I've never, never been into. I don't, uh, you know, I mean, I, but you, you have. You could tear my house apart, and you'll never find anything like okay. that. And I've never had anything. And you, and you may be right. Like that around. You may be right. And uh, you know. But I, I guess, like I said, my my concern is the progression. Yeah. Well, okay. A bit after a while, the fantasies don't become enough. So then you go out and you start going into the the uh, stores and who knows what you've done between this and going out to the stores and uh, doing what you do to yourself and what's next <clears throat> I mean you're making well, it you're in, making it obvious in this Michael. last year th those are the only two times in this whole last year well let me ask you something do you think that that's okay no so put yourself in an average Person, you know, a person that's not involved shoes that sees that kind of stuff. Take yourself out of your shoes and put yourself in someone else's shoes, seeing you do what you do. What do you think should happen to a person like that? I don't know. Why not? I just, uh, you know, I get so damn disgusted with myself over that. Uh... So you know it's wrong, but you still do it. Is that correct? Well, like I said, it's only twice in the in the last what fourteen months since I've been here. Okay, but thirty times in the last what what do we say? Thirty years. Thirty years. Okay. But you still kind of you didn't answer my question. Do you know that it's wrong? Oh yes, I do. But you've done it thirty times since. So you know it's wrong, but you continue to do it. It's a deviant behavior. What's so exciting about doing something like that? Is there a level of excitement? No, it's it's. What do you uh, get out of that? That's why I don't understand why why I do it because, you know, I don't. Uh, there's no satisfaction in it. Okay, so. What I, I guess what I'm getting out of it is it, it's something that you're telling me that you can't help. Uh, well, I, I think I probably can. It's just, uh, you know, I feel like I, I, I'm not, you know, that episode with, with, with the shorts hiked up, now that was wrong. That was bad. So were any of the 30 times right? Any of those no, thirty times that you did stuff like right. that, but uh, you know, it just, it's bad because why? Because you got caught? No, it's uh, because uh, you know I don't I feel like I've uh, you know I mean I'm covered up most all the time. It's it's just those blue shorts episodes that that was that was uh, crazy and and wrong. And it wasn't an accident. So don't try to paint that picture. You know it wasn't.
Well, I think there's I think there's more to this, Michael. And uh... <clears throat> listen, I've been impudent now for almost 10, 11 years, and you know. I, I, But, you know, okay, I get you're trying to explain to me what's going on, but it doesn't, but it doesn't have anything to do, just because you can't get your dick hard, doesn't make it any more wrong that it's hanging out of your pants and you're beating on it in front of, or in following little girls. And you're going to the point, you're even to the point where you're reckless about it. You do it intentionally and you're even reckless about it because you go out you plan on doing this stuff, you go out and you do it, and you're so focused in on these little girls that you don't even see the other people around you seeing you do it. That's how intense your, in my mind, your fantasy is at this point. Okay? So I guess my question is, what happens next? What's the next step from here? And I'm not talking about from here. I mean, for you in your fantasy. Give me a minute, okay? I, I, I just, uh, you know, this last month, I, I joined uh, uh, the uh, Desert Single Social Club. And there's no children there, not that I even, They're my age. Mm -hmm. And these are the people I want to be around. And uh, I want, um, you know, I'm, I have trouble meeting people. And uh, you know, this is this is this is what's that, this is what my plan is next. You know, is to, is to be more active. You know, I don't do bars. I don't, uh, you know, do any of those kind of things. All right, well, give me a second. I'll be I'll be back in. Okay? Okay, we're going to take a break. But, so that you know, Michael, you're going to be charged with the indecent exposure. Um, 
I'm gonna set you in a cell for a little bit, and then uh, I got some things that I have to do involving this, because you're not allowed to leave, because now you're under arrest. You understand that? Okay? And then um, I'll come back and get you in a, in a little bit, okay? Okay, now what, uh, what's gonna become of my car? And... Where's it at? It's parked out in the lot. Okay, which one did you drive? The Saturn. The Saturn? Thought it had bad plugs. I'm sorry? I had bad uh, valves. Well, no, that, uh, I thought it had uh, injectors were bad and it turned out to be a bad plug wire. Well, we'll worry about that when we get there. Uh, at the very worst, do you have somebody to come get it? No. Okay. The very worst, it would be towed to a, a yard. Max? Can you come get a gentleman for me, please, and set him in a cell? Okay. Um, he's under arrest, um, but he does need his belt and whatever contents he has in his pockets. Okay. Can you go with the uh, booking officer, Hardy, for okay. me, please? Am I going to be able to bond out? Um, you'll have to see a judge first, but go with Max right now and then... Uh, and when will I be able to see a judge? Um, well, the sooner we get this done, maybe the sooner we can get you to see a judge, but at the very latest tomorrow. Oh, but uh, okay. like I said, I got some stuff I need to do. black box on the floor down there? Go ahead for that. Thanks. Has it got a name or anything? Yeah, Michael Bailey. Michael Bailey. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. He should have his ID on him. 